Welcome home to English Worship. You can see that I have found a homey spot to be with you today. My name is Vanessa and I will be your host. And man, we are so glad that you have joined us today, whether it's in your coast, in your house, at a warung, uh, a coffee shop, whether you have a sofa, a chair, a tikar, or you're on the side of your motorbike. Some of you are watching in bed and you know what? That's okay too. We're glad you joined us. Today, like every single other time we've done this, we really want this to be interactive because man, we are not alone. So drop us a hello in the chat. If you are at a watch party, let us know who you're partying with. We are Kepo, we want to know. Also, there's a live prayer button because sometimes we need somebody to stand with us and the staff are here ready to be there with you, to pray with you and encourage you. Also, we want to say thank you for being so generous during this whole pandemic. If you would like to give, um, you can do so online at BTA or Mandiri. And remember that the Lord really loves a cheerful giver. So get yourself some coffee or some tea, get your notebook, get a comfy spot, and get ready because we are going to have an awesome time at church today. Welcome to English Worship Online! I'm Pastor Jamie and I'm so excited about this service today and I'm so glad that you've joined us today to worship with us and see what God wants to do in your life and speak to your heart. Hey, but before we start singing, let's open with a word of prayer. Would you pray with me? Father in heaven, we thank you for your goodness, and we just commit this worship service to you, asking you to, to draw near to us as we draw near to you. In Jesus' name we pray, and everyone says, amen. Let's worship the Lord together.
Man, I'm so glad that that you join you joined us for this time of worship uh, here at English Worship, uh, and we are a charismatic, Christ-centered community. That's what we believe here. Uh, that we want to engage in the things of God. We don't want to be participants. That's why we encourage you to, to be interactive with the sermon and, and, and to type things in. We, we believe that we want to sing out to God, not just watch a YouTube video of others singing. We also want to engage in prayer. And so as we spend this time worshiping, if you need someone to pray with, hit the live prayer button or DM us at uh, Instagram uh, at English Worship Jokja. Because we, we want to be engaged in this, not spectators just watching a video. So let's do that. Let's worship. Let's pray. Let's seek the Lord together today.
joining us here for uh, here online at English Worship Jokja. And I'm going to invite you to, to pray with us as we begin to make decisions about opening up the English Center for English worship to happen here once again. We want to make sure this is a safe place and everyone feels comfortable to return back here. So we are looking at potentially, everybody say potentially, we are looking at potentially and possibly moving back to having worship here at the English Center on August 23rd. August 23rd. So, so stay in touch with us through WhatsApp and Instagram because we want to make that announcement more formal as it comes close. But we want to make sure you and me feel safe worshiping here. So August 23rd, potentially, that we will have worship here again together 
at the IEC. And don't worry, we're going to wear masks. We've got shields. We've got hazmat suits. Okay, maybe we don't have that. But we've got everything. We want to have everything ready to have an gr- incredible worship service and experience here together August 23rd, potentially. All right, so, so just be aware of that. Now, I've got one more thing I want to share. I've got, I've got some good news and some bad news. Some good news and some bad news. Which, which do you want to hear first, all right? The bad news. Okay, the bad news. The bad news is at the end of this month, we're going to be saying goodbye or, uh, to Mike and Missy and Eli Towers. That's right. Their two-year contract is, is, has, is, is up, and, and they're going back to America the end of August. So that's some, some bad news for you. Now, here's the good news is they decided to sign another two-year contract, all right? So, so even though they're leaving at the end of the month, they're coming back in six months from now. So, so this is going to be more of a, of a see you later uh, to Mike, Missy, and Eli. So, so just so you know, you've got some bad news and some good news all wrapped up. Well, let's get started with today's messenger and message from the Old Testament, all right? Let's get started with today's messenger and message from the Old Testament. Now, when I was in junior high, a group of friends and I, we decided that we would, ask, a group of friends and I, we decided that we were going to ask a group of girls to go to the movies with us, all right? So, so I had all my friends, all my boys, all my guys, and we were going to go see a movie, and we thought, man, it would be cool to, to invite a group of girls to go with us. Now, this was an important moment in my adolescence because one of the girls that was going to go to the movies with us was Kelly. All right, now, now I had a major crush on Kelly in junior high. All right? So there was, there was probably a group of 10 of us, five guys, five girls, that went to the movies that day. And as, and as luck would have it, um, I was seated next to Kelly, right? And, and, as the, and, and, uh, and, and, and this movie um, proved to be this this movie experience ended up being one of the most embarrassing and memorable moments of my adolescent life. Because at the start of the movie, I wasn't really paying attention or focusing on the movie because my, my whole focus was looking cool for Kelly, right? I just wanted to, to be the man. I want to look cool. But, but as the movie went on, I started getting into the movie, right? You know, I forgot all about Kelly, you know? And, and at the end of the movie, there's this, there's this really dramatic scene. I can remember it like it was yesterday. There's this dramatic scene where, where Robin Williams is walking out of the classroom and all the students stand up on the desk and they say, oh, captain, my captain. Whoa, man. It was an emotional moment, you know, and, and, and I couldn't help. I was just, I was overcome with emotion and I start, I start crying, you know, tears start coming down my, my cheeks and, and I was just moved because it, it was just an emotional, powerful moment of the movie that, oh, captain, my captain. And he says, oh, thank you, boys. And, you know, so, so I'm crying and, and it's the end of the movie. The movie ends, the lights turn on and everybody looks at Kelly and I and I've got tears coming down my cheeks. And one of my friends yells, he goes, Jamie, are you crying in front of everybody? And I'm like, you know, I was so embarrassed, right? You know, I didn't know what to say. I was like, no, no, I just, I, I just have bad allergies. You know, like I was, I was trying to come up with an excuse or I was like, no, I, I just, I have something in my eye. That's all, that's all. But you know, everyone knew that I was crying at the movie. Well, needless to say, Nothing ever happened between Kelly and I, all right, after that moment, all right? Um, I still remember that. Are you crying? You know, that was the big thing, all right? So, well, today's messenger, today's messenger is Jeremiah, and he is known as the weeping prophet or the crying prophet, all right? He lived during the hardest time in the history of God's people, and so many of his messages are filled with tears and anguish. It's him calling out. It's him crying out to God for mercy and for justice. And because of his passionate prayers, he is called the weeping prophet. 
He prophesied during the decades leading up to the fall of Jerusalem in 587 BC, followed by the Babylonian exile. Everything that could go wrong did go wrong, all right? Everything in Jeremiah's lifetime could, that could go wrong did go wrong. It feels a lot like today, you know? Like we live in some troubled times, don't you think? I mean, everything that could go wrong is going wrong. I mean, we have a global pandemic. We have, we have schools that are shutting down. We have a lockdown in, uh, with economy and business is just, is just doing so terrible. It's, it's, it reminds me so much of what, when I read about Jeremiah's time, that everything that could go wrong did go wrong. So much of what we are experiencing today man, we're just experiencing some troubled and difficult times. And like you and I, Jeremiah was in the middle of it, sticking it out, praying and preaching, suffering and surviving, writing and believing. He lived through crushing storms of hostility and furies of bitter doubt. Every muscle in his body was stretched to the limit by fatigue. Every thought in his mind was subjected to questioning. And every feeling in his heart was put through the fire of ridicule. And all of Jeremiah's life experiences shaped his messages. The, messenger, the, messages, ah, the messages from this messenger, Jeremiah, are very simple. Present problems promised peace. Present problems, promised plan. All right. Present problems, promised plan. Jeremiah 29 says this. Jeremiah wrote a letter from Jerusalem to the elder priests, prophets, and all the people who had been exiled to Babylon by King Nebuchadnezzar. Now, remember last week what, I, what, what we learned. We talked about that sin exiles you from God's best, right? And that's what's happened here. The, the people of God, because of their sin and broken promises and compromise, they are living in exile. And exile is living apart from God's best. Well, Jeremiah goes on to write this in verse 10. This is what the Lord says. You will be in Babylon for 70 years that they will be in exile for 70 years. He tells them straight up, they will be, they, they'll be in this exile, this apart from God's best for 70 years. Because remember from last week, sin is serious. But here's what Jeremiah goes on to say. You'll be in exile for 70 years, but then I will come and do for you all the good things I have promised, and I will bring you home again. Just like the messenger Isaiah shared last week, hope is here, all right? Hope is here. So we've got, we've got sin is serious, but hope is here. And here's the big verse that many of us have memorized. Isaiah, I'm sorry, Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a hope and a future. In those days when you pray, I will listen. If you look for me wholeheartedly, you will find me. I will be found by you, says the Lord. I will end your captivity and restore your fortunes. I will gather you out of the nations where I sent you and bring you home again to your own land. Present problems, promised plan. Well, some of you know that I travel quite a bit, all right? I do a lot of traveling and for, for my job and in my life. And, and a, a few years ago, I was in, in the States, and I had to fly from my city of Chicago up to Minneapolis, Minnesota, where we have our biggest sponsor, all right? The person who, 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 who paid for the IEC, our biggest sponsor, he, uh, I had a very important meeting with this person, all right? So it was a, a can't-miss meeting. The problem is there was a giant snowstorm and my flight was canceled. 
but I had to get to this meeting, right? And so I'm, I'm like, what do I do? I try calling the airlines to, to rebook my ticket, and no one is answering the phone. So I, I tell Tosh, I'm like, I'm just going to drive to the airport, and hopefully they'll give me a ticket. So I, so I get in the car. I drive through the snowstorm. I get to the, to the airport, and there's this, this huge, huge line. And I'm like, How, what am I going to do? And you see, this is an important meeting because... When I meet with a sponsor, I usually have to, so I, I kasi la porandan minta dana lagi. All right, so it's very important uh, because I want to give a report and then ask for sponsorship, ask for money again, right? And so I get to the airport, huge line, but because I'm a platinum member, yes, um, I, I see it, I, I get to cut right to the front of the line. So I go up to the front and I say, man, I got to get to this city today. How can I get there? And they say, I'm sorry, we can get you on a ticket. We have a ticket for you ready to go tomorrow. And I'm like, no, it's got to happen today. I got to get there today. I got an important meeting tonight. I got to get there. And so the lady says to me, she goes, well, you can, we, we can give you a standby ticket, all right? Do you know what a standby ticket is? It's, it's a ticket they give you, but you, you have a ticket for the plane, but no seat. So that if someone doesn't show up, you can have their seat. But if everyone shows up, you just stand by and watch the plane leave. All right, so that's how standby usually works. And so, so I was like, I'll take it. You know, I'll take my chance. And man, I'm praying, all right? Now, now I pray every day, but that day I was really praying, all right? So, so I've got my standby ticket, and I go to the gate, and I'm waiting. And the plane starts to fill up, and I'm waiting outside the plane. It starts to fill up, and I'm just waiting, and I'm waiting, and, and I'm like, this isn't going to happen. And, I'm, and I, I, I am praying, almost like praying out loud, all right, um, in front of you. And all of a sudden, I hear oh, over the speaker, like, Jameson Kemp, come to the agent desk. And I was like, alhamdulillah. You know, I was like so happy. I go up there with my standby ticket. They say, we have one seat left. Would you like it? I'm like, absolutely. Um, and, and I get my ticket and, and, uh, and I look and, uh, and, I, and, I, and I'm so happy. And they, she says, but, uh, but it's, it's a middle seat. Is that okay with you? Oh, like, man, I hate the middle seat, right? You know, like, like I, man, I just, but I had to take it, right? It was the only ticket left. So, but man, I just don't like the, the middle seat because, you know, you don't get the benefit. You know, if you're on the window, you get the benefit of kind of like leaning up against the window, right? Or, or if you're on the aisle, you can kind of like stretch out and kind of, you have a little more room. But man, when you're in that middle seat, you're just, you're just stuck, right? You're, you're just stuck there. And then, you know, you start fighting over that little six, six centimeter armrest. You know, you're like, you know, you're trying to fight over it. I believe if I'm in the middle seat, I should get both armrests, right? You know, because the window person, they got space. The, the aisle person, they have space. So I'm like, man, I should be able to get both of those. So, so I got my ticket. I see, I go to my middle seat and it's really early in the morning. I sit down and, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm in my middle seat, no room on my left, no room on my right. And, and the flight, the plane takes off. And uh, all of a sudden the person next to me, she, she kind of falls asleep. And as she sleeps, she starts like leaning over onto me. All right? Have you ever, have you ever had that? And so, so she, at first it was like, she was just like a little on my shoulder, but all of a sudden it was like, she was like totally on my side. And I was like, what do I do? You know, like, what is, do you know what is like pro, proper protocol? You know, like what's the right thing to do? Do I wake the person up or, you know, so I'm like, so she's leaning on me. Now I'm leaning over as far as I can. And the guy on the window is leaning on the window. So it's like this whole, everybody's leaning one way. And, and, and so finally I was like, I got to do something. I can't, I can't fly for two hours like this. And so, so finally I, I act like I'm tying my shoe. So I lean forward and she kind of falls to the side and wakes up and she's like, oh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm like, oh, oh no problem. I, uh, oh, you, you weren't doing anything, but you know, so it was just, it just reminded me how much I hate the middle seat, right? You know, it's just a, a it's just an awful, awful experience. You know, you know what it's like if you've been on a plane or a bus or the train when you are stuck in that middle seat. Now, it's important uh, for you to know why I'm telling you this story. Partly because I want you, and especially Rachel, who travels a lot, to know that sometimes even I have bad travel experiences, all right? So I even have bad travel. But the real reason why I tell you this story is because there's something in it that's important 
that will help you and help us understand the context that the messenger Jeremiah was sharing in his message and the context you and I live in every day. You see, Jeremiah, in many ways, was living in the middle seat. He says to the people of God, we're going into exile for 70 more years. And he tells them that there are, there are present problems. He doesn't ignore the current situation. But in the midst of their present problems, he says there's a, there's a promised plan. There's a promised plan that, that God has a plan to give them a hope and to give them a future. So, so he's, Jeremiah is living in this middle seat. He's got present problems, but a promised plan. And if we want to properly understand what God is calling us to as Christ followers, I think it's important for us to understand what it means to be in the middle seat. If we want to properly understand what God is calling us uh, as Christ followers, I think it's important that we understand what it means to be in the middle seat. Present problems a uh, promised plan. Jeremiah doesn't ignore the current situation. It's bad, right? And I think as Christians, we sometimes feel this pressure to act like everything's okay. You know, like we're supposed to be this eternal optimist that, that, that everything's just going to be okay. Every day we're supposed to smile and skip and just have this great life and that we can never have a bad day. And if we do, it means, it means something is wrong. You see, a few years ago, uh, a couple of people that I was really close to, man, they, man, they really hurt me. <laughs> they really injured me in, in, a, in a deep way. They were, in a, they were really involved here with the English worship Jokja community. They were great leaders. I'd gone on some ministry trips with them. And, and one day they, uh, they, they asked if they could, could have a formal meeting with me which I thought was strange because, you know, we would always be hanging out and most of our interaction was, was really casual. But, but that day they asked if they could meet with me formally. When we sat down, they, they went and they shared all the things that, 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 they, that they felt were wrong with me. They began to share all the ways that I was a bad leader to them. And they just started like laying into me. And, and, and it was like they'd forgotten any of the good that we'd ever done together. And, and their words were just so painful and so hurtful. And, and, I, and I was literally shocked. I, I was like, I, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to react. So of course I said, I'm sorry. You know, I, I'm sorry you feel that way. I'm sorry that, that, that that's happened. And I, I remember they, they didn't give me any suggestions on how to improve they just told me how bad I was. I didn't know how to respond. It was one of the most painful days in ministry and in leadership I've ever had. And, and that's when I started using the phrase, you know, a stab in the front hurts just as bad as a stab in the back, right? Some of you know what I'm talking about. So, so man, I was hurting. So I contacted one of my mentors, Pastor Dave, and he said something that was like, like so prophetic for me. He said, Jamie, he said, life is hard, God is good, don't get those confused. Life is hard, God is good, don't get those confused. I mean, that's, that's what it means to like live in the middle seat, right? I mean, that's what, that's what we're, the, the life that we are called to live in. And, and when Jeremiah is prophesying, that's what he's saying. That's, that's what it means to, to live in this middle seat. And, but we get this all mixed up, don't we? When we come to faith in Jesus, sometimes we're, we're almost like tricked into thinking that, oh, I'm a Christian now, like life is going to be easy. And I'm almost guilty of this too as a, as a preacher and a, as a pastor. Because we hear that if we trust Jesus, you know, every day is going to be sunny. Every day is going to be a good day. We're going to wake up and birds are going to be singing in the air. And we're going we're gonna to just skip and dance to work every day. And there's going to be rainbows in the sky. And, and, and unicorns are going to be flying. You know, like somehow we have this misperception or we've kind of either intentionally or unintentionally thought that, oh, I'm a Christian, so God loves me more. And every day is going to be a good day. Pastors and preachers and Christian leaders, 
They tell us to walk in the blessings of God. So when bad things happen, man, what do we do? We blame God? Or even worse, we, we blame ourselves and we feel like failures. But the messenger Jeremiah, he doesn't ignore the present reality that life is tough. Life is hard. Man, a few months ago, I was talking to one of our student leaders, and uh, he was telling me uh, that, that he finally told his parents that he made a decision to follow Jesus with his life, that he was a Christian. Man, his parents were not happy about this at all. Man, they didn't accept his decision, and they were extremely mad and disappointed with him. I remember he SMSed me, and, and he asked me, he's like, Pastor Jamie, what, what should I do? And man, I gave him the best advice that I could. You know, I, I said to honor your parents. I said to, to pray for your parents. And, and when they see your, your life and your attitude, how it's been changed, you know, maybe it'll start to change them. But, but after I gave, them that, that, gave him that advice, the, the most important thing I said to him was this. I said, hey, you've got to understand this. Life is hard. And God is good. Don't get those confused. Jeremiah understood the present problems. He didn't ignore them or run away from them. He was the weeping prophet because he lived through them. God did not forget his people. Even though they were captives in Babylon, he planned to give them a new beginning with, with new purpose to, to turn them into a new people. In our present problems and our dire circumstances, it, it may appear as though God has forgotten about you, but maybe God is preparing you as, as he did the people of Judah for a new beginning with him at the center. The Apostle Paul puts it this way in Philippians 1.21. He, he says it like this, For me, to live is Christ and die is gain. It's like Paul is saying, hey, get comfortable living in this middle seat. You know, even Jesus, he doesn't ignore our present problems. Instead, he gives us a promised plan. John 16.33, Jesus says, I have told you these things so that you may have peace. In this world, you will have troubles, all right? Jesus says straight up, life is hard. In this world, you will have troubles. But take heart, I have overcome the world. When you are in Christ, you are living in this, this middle seat you belong to a future kingdom. You are living in the here and now with sin and brokenness and problems all around you. But because you are in Christ, you are experiencing the joy and the hope and the healing of heaven. But, but, but you've not experienced it in its fullness yet. This is what theologians call the already not yet principle. The kingdom of God has already come, but not yet in its fullness. Life is hard. God is good. Don't get them confused. The worship team could come help me close. The messages of Jeremiah are filled with tears and prayers to God for his nation and his people. He cried out to God to bring hope and salvation and healing. He was the weeping prophet. His heart was broken for the things of God. So I guess I have to ask today, what breaks your heart? Right? What breaks your heart? What are you crying out to God for? If I were to listen to your prayers, what would I hear? When was the last time you, I mean, you just cried out to God? When was the last time you prayed for your family or your friends or your campus or your workplace, your, even this nation? What breaks your hearts? Does your heart break for the things of God? You see, two weeks ago, 
we said goodbye to Lauren. She moved back to America after serving and living here in Indonesia and in Jogja for seven years. Man, she, she was such a blessing to Tosh and I and to the ministry, and, and she is missed. But she's missed in one area more than any other. She's missed not because of, of open English or even the black tribe at, a, at Chi Alpha, but, but where she's missed is this, is if you ever had a chance to pray with her, you know that she's passionate about prayer. That when, when she prayed, she, wanted, she prayed that Jesus would change Indonesia. And in the past seven years, I've probably had a hundred prayer meetings. I'm not even exaggerating. A hundred prayer meetings with, with Lauren. And I saw her weep and cry out to God to bring change and salvation to Indonesia. And here's the incredible thing. She's not even Indonesian. Right? Why is there a boule? Why is there a foreigner weeping over this nation when so many of you have never prayed for your nation, have never shed a tear for your nation, never cried out to God for your campus? Why is it that a foreigner is crying out for your campus and not you? Will you take her place in prayer? Will you step into that gap, that hole, that opportunity to pray for Indonesia, to pray for your campus and your friends? Will you, who, my question is, who will continue to pray and cry out and weep for Indonesia, to pray for friends and family and the campuses here in Jogja? My biggest fear of her leaving is not the ministry she led, but it's the prayers she prayed. Who will continue those prayers? Will you be the one who will step up and step in and be the weeping prophet to pray for Indonesia, to pray for your campus, to say, God, break my heart for the things that break your heart. Does your heart break for the things of God? And that's what I want to ask you. And that's what I want you to ask God. Would you break my heart for the things that break your heart? Let's spend these few moments asking God to do that now. Sing and say, God, break my heart for the things that break your heart. 
Will you ask God to break your heart? Oh, God, here we are. Go ahead, guys. Lift your hands to God and say, God, here I am. Here I am, oh God, and break my heart, God. Let me weep for the things that make you cry. God, touch my heart in a new way. I pray for my friends, God, who don't know you. Bring salvation to them. I pray for my family that you bring blessing to them. God, I pray for my campus that this would be a year of revival, a year of change. Oh, God, I pray for this nation of Indonesia. Oh, God, that you bring change. Go ahead, guys. Begin to pray out. Say, God, break my heart for these things. Oh, God, yeah. Some of you, man, you're you're feeling or sensing something. You're not sure what, how to respond, and maybe it's because you've you've never made the decision to follow Jesus with your life. Man, the scriptures tell us that 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 all have sinned and fallen short of God's standard, and the penalty, the cost of that sin is death. But the free gift of God is eternal life. Through Christ Jesus, that anyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. It's that simple. It's, it's simple as A, B, C. Admit that you're a sinner. Believe in Jesus and commit to following him. Berang siapa yang bersuruh kepada Tuhan Yesus akan diselamatkan. It's as easy as that. And so if you're wanting to make that decision today to follow Jesus with your life, I want to pray for you. Would you pray this simple prayer with me? Pray this, Father, or Father in heaven, forgive me for my sins. Make me brand new. I believe Jesus died for me and rose again so I could live for you. Fill me with your spirit so I could follow you for the rest of my life. 
thank you for new life. Today I give you mine. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hey, if you prayed that prayer, man, we want to we wanna pray with you also. We want to chat with you. So we're going to spend just a few more moments worshiping and singing, but I want to invite you to, to hit the, 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 resp- the live prayer button so we can talk with you. Or maybe you're here and you're saying, Pastor Jamie, I need someone to pray with. I want you to hit that live prayer button. For these next few moments, let's pray that God would break our heart, the things that break his, as we sing Hosanna together. Let's do that now. us a hope and a future. So even no matter how bad our situation is, grant the people strength and comfort to trust in your plan. God, bless them as they travel back to Jokja to begin class. Bless them as they begin to cl- begin classes online. Bless their finances that their tuition would be paid for and that their, their bills would be paid. Bless their parents so that their, their parents would know the, the, the financial provision of God. But more than anything, bless us with your presence this week. Knowing that God is our Father, Jesus is our Savior, the Holy Spirit is our helper, and heaven is our home. And all the people of God say together, amen, amen. God bless you guys. Thanks again for logging in to English Worship Online. God bless you guys. Yes. Hey guys, welcome back. How was it? I hope it was awesome. You for sure got something out of it. And if you did, let us know in the chat. What did you learn today? What is something that God spoke to you through that message? Well, we have only two announcements today. So sad, but kind of fun because these are two good announcements. Announcement number one. Worship Wednesday, of course. Worship Wednesday is awesome. It's such a nice time to have a break in the middle of the week where we just spend time together, worship, hear from God. So join us Wednesday at one on Instagram live, like the story, Insta story, you know what I mean. Anyway, also we have um, an opportunity for you to give us your song request so that we can play a worship song that is meaningful to you. Announcement Kadua is find a friend, get a job. We've been saying it over and over because it's so important during this pandemic. And you know what? The best way to find a friend is to be a friend. And the best way I know to be a friend is to join the Connect team. Hey, you didn't know I was gonna say that, did you? Well. It is, time. 
It's an opportunity for you to get to know other people, to be outgoing. And if you're shy, that's okay. It's an opportunity for you to grow. You can actually click on whatever link there is in the chat, or if you're on Instagram, DM us, or if you have my number, just text me. I would love to get in contact with you and let you know how you can join this awesome team. So that's it. Thank you for joining us from our home to yours. Have a happy Sunday. I'm gonna pray that my bad, <laughs> my bad chord. I don't know what. <laughs> I don't know the words. I'm making up the stuff.